Hello, welcome to lecture 17 of Introduction to the Sikhs. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Sikh organizations, though um, the topic is actually more specific than that. In previous lectures, I've already uh, introduced um, the uh, SGPC that manages uh, historic Gurdwaras in Punjab, the um, uh, political party, the Akali Dal, and then uh, some diaspora organizations that are meant to uh, uh, provide some uh, governance for uh, Sikh uh, religious sites, such as the World Sikh Council. Uh, today, I actually want to um, focus on um, uh, Sikh organizations, uh, which are uh, essentially a product of uh, the diaspora. So these are organizations based mainly in the U.S., a couple in Canada. And uh, there are similar organizations in Britain, but uh, I wanted to focus on the ones that are uh, um, most uh, closest to home. Um, a lot of these um, organizations uh, have... Uh, very effective uh, website presences, and I'll use the websites to just uh, introduce them. Uh, some of the organizations, in fact, are just um, uh, website magazines and web magazines, and I'll talk about those as well. Uh, so here's, here's a complete list. Uh, that's uh, a lot of uh, different, uh, different uh, organizations. There's a wide variety of them. Some are... Um, um, focused on civil rights, some are focused on uh, young people in the community, some are more um, uh, focused on um, uh, ideas, uh, specific ideas like eco sikh focusing on the environment, or suffer focusing on um, uh, feminism, Sikh feminism, and uh, there's a couple of um, uh, more uh, sort of arts and culture type, uh, type um, magazines or websites. So I'll talk about all of these uh, very briefly. Uh, before I do that, I just want to um, introduce um, the, these clips, which are available on Canvas. Uh, and it's a little different from uh, uh, the topic of today's lecture, but relates back to what we had been talking about earlier. And uh, the Rose Parade, of course, is a, an American institution more than um, 100 years old, associated with the, uh, the Rose Bowl game in uh, Pasadena, California. And uh, they have a parade with uh, uh, lots of floral floats. From 2016, Sikh organizations have been participating and entering floats. And uh, uh, these are just clips from uh, each of the five years. So you can get a sense of how Sikhs are uh, uh, trying to participate in mainstream e uh, events and also to project uh, themselves to uh, a, broader, a broader constituency. So I'll first start by talking about SALDEF. Uh, SALDEF is the Sikh American Legal Defense and Education Fund. It uh, started out in the mid-90s as um, uh, the Sikh Media Action Resource Task Force, and uh, its goal was to uh, uh, educate the general population about Sikhs and to uh, protect Sikh civil rights and uh, I think um, some of the motivation from, uh, came also, I think, from the personal experiences of some of the founders who were, uh, for example, very badly bullied uh, growing up in school in the United States. So um, uh, SALDEF has uh, uh, become quite, uh, quite important in terms of uh, uh, making it, make, make institutionalizing uh, the approach to um, uh, s protecting Sikh civil rights, and uh, they uh, uh, have uh, uh, they have uh, done campaigns, media campaigns. They have uh, uh, done surveys to see how uh, uh, mainstream Americans understand Sikhs, uh, which turns out to be not not very well. And uh, they've also introduced uh, programs like. Uh, uh, internship programs for uh, young Sikhs, uh, where, for example, they might uh, work with a uh, Congress person or, uh, for a, a few weeks, or uh, uh, with some other organization. Uh, that program is called Sikh Lead. Uh, the uh, connection to uh, 
uh, politicians is aided by the fact that Saldef is based in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, one of their uh, activities that is uh, quite nice is that they do a langar on the hill, where they um, host a langar in one of the congressional uh, buildings and invite Congress people and their staffers again to introduce the Sikh community to uh, a broader, uh, broader uh, American audience. Next, I'll talk about United Six. United Six um, started, I think, in 1999, and uh, its origins are um, uh, actually somewhat different. It uh, started out more as a relief organization. Um, the uh, uh, inspiration came from the Sikh tradition of, uh, again, Sarbat Tabala, service to all, uh, wishing the welfare of all, and uh, Seva. And, uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, the uh, 2020 ro uh, Rose Parade float featured uh, Bhai Kanaya, a figure from Sikh history who uh, uh, embodied that uh, idea of serving uh, everybody in a, everywhere as needed. So United Six started out um, organizing relief efforts for disasters, uh, not just in the United States, but globally. Uh, they were, for example, very active in the uh, tsunami over a decade ago, then in the uh, more recent uh, earthquake in Haiti. Uh, and um, uh, they are also um, uh, very quick to respond to uh, natural disasters in, uh, in the United States, um, small and large. Um, the United States also is a little different from the other organizations in having um, a presence in a strong presence in the UK and several other uh, countries, Australia, for example, and uh, again, I think that global presence connects to its uh, its uh, desire to uh, um, so, uh, to address natural disasters, provide relief to natural disasters uh, anywhere they occur. Uh, United Six more recently has actually been uh, following the path of Saldef and. Uh, also doing a, a fair amount of civil rights work, presumably because uh, uh, people uh, who are in need approach uh, whichever organization they're familiar with. And again, United Six does various, uh, has various events to raise awareness uh, about the Sikh community and also to educate young Sikhs. The um, next uh, organization is uh, the Sikh Coalition. The Sikh Coalition was actually started by, I think, uh, former members of uh, SMART, which became Saldev. And it was actually specifically started after, uh, right after 9-11, after the uh, uh, attacks on the World Trade Center and uh, Pentagon in, in uh, 2001. Um, again, uh, the... Uh, uh, focus is very much on uh, civil rights and uh, also on uh, educating the general population. Uh, Sikh Coalition has perhaps been the most active um, or most proactive among the, uh, these uh, civil rights organizations in terms of uh, uh, connecting with um, other uh, civil rights organizations and minority groups and in particular explicitly recognizing that the uh, legal frameworks that they build on were uh, a product of the African-American civil rights movement in the 60s. Um, in uh, one of these clips you can see, uh, one of these um, uh, photos, you can see uh, uh, one of the co-founders of Sikh Coalition, Harpreet Singh, talking to Kamau Bell. And uh, that led, uh, Harpreet Singh contacting Bell led to uh, an episode of United Shades of America, which uh, featured uh, featured the six, and uh, I'd recommend watching that. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, interesting, uh, good information in there. Um, so, uh, Sikh Coalition also has introduced um, um, introduced um, uh, internship programs uh, or training programs for young six, and uh, it's right now probably the uh, the largest of the three organizations I've mentioned, Saldef, United Six, and Sikh Coalition in terms of uh, budget. But even there, uh, even uh, among all these three, the, the budget is really quite small, maybe 
of uh, Sikh Coalition has a couple of million dollars a year to spend. So really very, very uh, small, uh, limited resources, which, which they stretch quite well. So um, now we'll turn to um, a slightly different organization, the Sikh Coalition and United Sikhs are actually based in New York. So all three that I mentioned so far were based in, uh, on the East Coast and uh, often started by uh, urban professionals. The Jakarta movement is quite different. It was started in Fresno, and the uh, Sikh population of, Fre of uh, California is uh, quite different in makeup from um, Sikh pop populations in the uh, uh, urban centers in the East Coast uh, because it has a large uh, component of Sikhs with rural backgrounds and Sikhs who work in uh, farms and so on. Uh, and uh, so uh, the uh, Sikh population in California is more, more diverse, more heterogeneous, uh, often from, uh, often with, you know, um, on average, uh, lower socioeconomic status than uh, uh, other Sikh uh, communities, and uh, definitely compared to the uh, Indian American community overall, which is uh, very highly skewed towards uh, highly educated professionals. So Jakarta is basically uh, focused on uh, serving young Sikhs. They start with high school students, and uh, uh, they also work a lot with college students. Their goals are to... Uh, uh, teach um, uh, young Sikhs about their uh, history and community, and essentially to uh, to uh, give them uh, give them training and confidence to uh, uh, apply to good colleges and to succeed in college once they're there, and to uh, uh, do this without uh, without having to uh, uh, give up their give up their heritage. So uh, this is, I think, a very significant organization. Interestingly, their um, uh, local chapters, they have several throughout, many throughout California, are organized uh, and in, with the name Missiles, which evokes the decentralized federation of the uh, uh, early Khalsa period that uh, was then superseded by Ranjit Singh's kingdom. So uh, uh, Jakarta, I think, is, is really a very important organization, especially on the West Coast. Um, now I'll briefly talk about the uh, Surat Initiative. So Surat means uh, uh, consciousness, and this is uh, actually aimed at uh, young Sikh professionals, college age or after, uh, 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 just after college, maybe even into their 30s. The goal is to have um, small conferences and workshops where uh, young Sikh professionals are able to learn in depth about uh, Sikh teachings, but also it gives a chance for... Um, uh, young Sikhs uh, to meet each other and socialize. Uh, so uh, I think one can find these kinds of um, organizations in, in uh, many other religious communities, particularly minority communities in the U.S., like the Jewish community. Uh, SikhNet is, is uh, quite interesting. It actually has, um, it's, it's essentially a, a web-based organization, and it has uh, a very large and significant uh, presence. It was actually, it stands out because it was started by um, um, Western converts to Sikhism, followers, followers of uh, Hari Bhajan Singh Yogi or Yogi Bhajan. And uh, I think it's funded mainly by, uh, uh, by their uh, um, donations, but uh, it's also, like the others, a 501c3 organization and uh, solicits, actively solicits do donations. Um, as over time, they've really expanded the scope of their website. So they will, uh, SikhNet has uh, many um, articles addressing the concerns of Sikhs in uh, Punjab and India more broadly. And uh, it also addresses some issues which um, perhaps some of the other Sikh organizations um, on the East Coast are, are less uh, prone to tackle things like um, uh, domestic violence and uh, other aspects of gender inequality within the Sikh community. Uh, they also, I think, are a little more open about uh, things like mental health issues. Uh, SikhNet also has a very, um, very substantial um, uh, archive of uh, uh, Shabad Kirtan, 
and uh, really provides a, a very large trove of of, um, uh, shab- of uh, sick music uh, for uh, uh, all all uh, all listeners. Um, so there's also um, magazine type articles. There's a, a section devoted to uh, uh, articles and uh, activities for children and so on. So it's I think meant to be a complete res- web resource web portal for six. Uh, next, I'll briefly talk about Suffer, which is based in uh, uh, Canada, I think Toronto, and this is the um, Sikh um, uh, Feminist Re- Research Institute, um, and uh, this was started by uh, young Sikh women again to address issues of uh, gender inequality and patriarchy within uh, the Sikh community and Punjabi community, perhaps more broadly. Uh, as I've uh, said, a lot of these uh, aspects are uh, cultural rather than uh, religion-based. Um, the uh, uh, the organization Suffer uh, had uh, started out by organizing, you know, workshops and conferences where they focused on these issues and highlighted the work of uh, young Sikh women, both academics and uh, non-academic professionals, um, especially in areas like uh, health. Uh, uh, lately, I think they've been uh, relatively dormant, but uh, certainly their website is, is uh, a presence. And uh, I think the, uh, uh, the uh, concept uh, is, is still an important one. So we'll, we'll see how, this, uh, how it comes back. Um, another uh, so very focused organization is ENSAF. ENSAF is based in uh, uh, California. And it is uh, dedicated to uh, essentially uh, truth and reconciliation with respect to what happened uh, around 1984 in Punjab, where uh, in the decade following, uh, many uh, young Sikhs were killed uh, by police and army in extrajudicial kiss- killings. They just disappeared. And in fact, even uh, one or two of the people who tried to highlight this um, uh, these, these violations of human rights themselves then were uh, fell victim to to this uh, extrajudicial killing. So uh, NSAF, uh, I think the fact that it's California-based again reflects the fact that uh, um, its um, its uh, membership uh, or its founders come from uh, you know their families come from rural communities in Punjab that were very heavily impacted by the. Uh, uh, oppression in Punjab in the 80s, and what they've been doing is both remembering the victors and also victims, and also um, um, uh, documenting the uh, the uh, the perpetrators, so that uh, uh, it, it's a way of uh, bringing some kind of justice and not letting people forget. Next, uh, ECOSIC is um, an organization based, again, I think in Washington, D.C. It's uh, relatively recent and was formed, I think, initially just to um, uh, connect with the, the broader ethos of environmentalism and to uh, uh, provide a point of contact for uh, young Sikhs. So uh, initially it, it was uh, fairly, fairly um, lightweight, I guess, in terms of uh, environmental activities, but uh, uh, more recently it's actually become uh, quite active in Punjab and has done things like launching um, um, uh, waste removal and tree planting campaigns in Punjab. And given the uh, in severe environmental de- degradation in Punjab, I think that's, that's very welcome. And for young Sikhs in the U.S., they organize various kinds of uh, uh, activities and events to uh, uh, emphasize uh, caring for earth and the environment. Um, there's lots of verses in the um, Guru Granth Sahib which um, uh, praise nature and uh, and, and uh, creation. And uh, uh, Guru Har Rai, the seventh guru, was particularly uh, known for his uh, love of nature and love of uh, all all uh, living beings. The Sikh Research Institute is uh, another um, um, 
East Coast-based organization uh, in the Northeast. And uh, it's, um, again, somewhat similar to um, Surat, perhaps, but uh, in terms of they organize some uh, uh, conferences and activities, but they also uh, provide some uh, online uh, courses and they uh, try to provide various kinds of uh, online educational materials. They also provide a lot of uh, materials for uh, Sikhs of uh, all backgrounds to uh, learn more about uh, Sikh heritage, uh, language, uh, religious teachings, and so on. The Sikh Foundation International is um, another West Coast organization based in Palo Alto. And uh, it's probably um, uh, the oldest of the modern um, uh, diaspora Sikh organizations uh, and uh, recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. Uh, a lot of its presence is through uh, its website, where they've uh, uh, had various um, uh, had various um, uh, articles, stories, and so on. But they've also sponsored uh, conferences and uh, other events. A major focus of the Sikh Foundation International, because its founder uh, Narendra Kapani is is uh, an art collector, has been um, uh, promoting Sikh art uh, and. Uh, uh, for example, collaborating with the Asian Art Museum in uh, San Francisco. Um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, they've also brought out uh, several uh, books of Sikh art. Uh, and a few years ago, actually, they also collaborated with the Victoria and Albert Museum in London for a Sikh art exhibition there, and uh, again brought out uh, a book of uh, Sikh art based on that uh, uh, exhibition. The um, uh, Sikh, Sikh Foundation um, is not the only um, only uh, site or uh, it's not the only uh, a group of Sikhs interested in, in art. There are several other significant uh, uh, collectors of Sikh art. And in fact, uh, these individuals have helped to uh, define Sikh art as a, as a category. Uh, Sikh Sheik is... Um, uh, really just a, a, a magazine, uh, again, a broad-based magazine uh, designed to provide um, articles and uh, features on all things Sikh. Uh, a, lot, a lot of it is uh, lighthearted, but there are also uh, some more serious um, uh, articles about the community. Again, there's often, uh, uh, like Sikh Foundation International or some of the other sites, there's a lot of focus on the positive, emphasizing achievements of Sikhs, particularly in the diaspora, but also, um, also back in Punjab and India. The Langar Hall um, is another uh, uh, Sikh magazine, and uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's active anymore, but uh, when it, uh, it was uh, functioning, uh, the website is still there, but when it was functioning, it uh, provided uh, a really wonderful uh, venue for young Sikhs to write about uh, issues of concern to them and also uh, provide perspectives on Sikhs in uh, um, U.S. society. If I can use the term, I think the, the uh, perspectives were perhaps much more progressive than uh, some of the uh, other, other uh, Sikh organizations, which are somewhat... Um, uh, more careful about uh, taking t uh, political stands that are uh, could be seen as, as uh, out, out uh, too far uh, in one direction. I think uh, uh, most Sikhs, like most Indian Americans, tend to be uh, somewhat left-leaning, though uh, there are also uh, Sikhs at the other end of the spectrum, uh, just, just as in the case of uh, Indian Americans more broadly. So that was a very quick tour through um, uh, over a dozen websites uh, featuring various kinds of Sikh organizations. And uh, really, there are many, many more, both in the US and uh, in uh, other, other countries. And uh, that's without uh, going into uh, the uh, various presences that Sikhs have in, in uh, uh, Punjab and India. But I think these... Uh, uh, websites in, and organizations in the uh, U.S. have been actually quite influential in terms of um, uh, 
uh, shaping uh, perceptions of the Sikh community globally.